Hey, everybody. Thank you for being here on All Access Live. I'm super excited about today's episode with uh, Jade Starling from Pretty Poison. But before we get started, let me ask you to do me a favor. If you're watching this on anything else other than YouTube, go to the link below. Go to youtube.com slash at Access Kevin. From there, you can subscribe to the channel. You're going to find 277 other episodes of this show that we've done since the beginning of the pandemic. And you'll also be able to be notified when we have upcoming guests. I've got Mike Collins from Rooftop Screamers next week. We've got Jeff Pilson from Foreigner and Dokken coming up. I also have Randy Hansen, the world's most renowned Jimi Hendrix impersonator. I've got all sorts of incredible guests, but I wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for my sponsor. So please let me introduce to you uh, Five Star Guitars. Five Star is based in Oregon, and they have no sales tax. So if you're interested in playing guitar and you want to save a bunch of money, go to this link, fivestarguitars.com. Use All Access Live at the end of that string, fivestarguitars.com slash Live. When you find all those products there and use the promo code of allaccess 15 you're going to save 15% off everything else you see. So you no know sales tax, you've got 15% off, and uh, you'll help them the way that they help me. So uh, thanks, Five Star Guitars, and also thanks to Risa Royale's Catherine Wilcox for being the new super fan of this YouTube channel. Now, this next guest and I got to know each other from Lost 80s Live Tours when I'm out with Flock of Seagulls and before that with Animotion. Uh, we got to hang out at The Sands, which was previously 80s in the Sand, both in Dominican Republic and Cancun. She's got a brand new video of Seal's cover of Crazy, and I've got her right here from the studio in New Jersey. How you doing, Jade? <laughs> we're we're going to try this audio thing out. We're just going to see how this works. Okay. So uh, I had um, Dave Wakeling from uh, English Beat on the show the other day. He was in the studio in the, actually he was in the van or his tour bus. And I tried to do this. I tried to do a little audio speakerphone thing. We had a lot of feedback. So my apologies to people that are watching. So far, it seems good. And so I like, we got a gold record behind you, which is perfectly placed behind you, like a halo. Oh, I like, is it? Oh, good. <laughs> it's, it's actually platinum now, but oh. I just happen to have the gold one. Fan? It has been certified platinum. Congratulations. That's huge, man. Um, you know, it's interesting, right? I mean, the, the way that records and singles were way back in the day in the 80s, um, you had to get, uh, I get 500,000 for gold, a million for platinum. And you'd had all these records sold now with the way that re records are being produced. It's pretty much singles. Streams. You're getting streams. Exactly. So your fan base is kind of based more now in the dance market on uh, on the number of streams you've got. So you, you're everywhere. You've got them on Apple and Spotify and Amazon and all that stuff. We're on every platform, definitely. Oh, right on. And what were you working on in the studio today? Oh, um, I'm doing a project with... Marcus Schultz. Okay. He's uh, a very big trance uh, producer. He does a lot of festivals and things. So I'm actually working on three tracks with him for his next album. Right on. So I'm not only working on our stuff, I'm doing collaborations with other people too. So, And I'm on this deadline and I knew that I had to get back here and do this interview with you. So, I mean, I literally called you <laughs> like a minute oh, to man. Eight, so. I appreciate that thank you I'm glad that I was able to get here and do this with you I'm really excited uh, and I also just found out that my single my current single crazy just entered uh it's bubbling under on the top 40 oh my god top 40 pop chart hell yes so it's officially going to radio congrats it's it's already reached number one on a lot of the international charts. I'm not surprised. In fact, we're number one for the second week on the international top fifty. Right. It's number one in Asia, number one in South America, Africa, um, Amsterdam. So it's it's pretty darn exciting. Well, let me ask you about that. So I mean. I... First of all, I mean, I love that song. The original song is incredible. I think the cover that you did is awesome. Very upbeat and, and vibey. Um, two questions. Number one, you talked about all those other locations that it actually blew up on. So are you planning on doing some touring to get over there and help support the record? Or it's a, that's a lot of travel. It is a lot of travel. And actually, before the pandemic, we were scheduled to go over to Amsterdam and do uh, 
they do a, a music festival every year in October. It's like DJs and uh, festivals for like a week or two. It's it's like everybody goes there to do it. And then that right around October is when everything started shutting down. Oh, yeah. So we didn't end up going that year, but we do have plans to possibly go over this year where we are in talks about it. So I am hoping to at least to do, to do the UK and Amsterdam, definitely Amsterdam. Right on. Yeah, I I um, love it. I mean, that, and so you would do with festivals I there? I want to eat cake for a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're down there, you've obviously played and toured Amsterdam, or you've done Amsterdam gigs in the past. So you've got a good following there. Um, when you're there, do you get a little chance to check out the scenery and do a little sightseeing? Or are you just in and out? Absolutely. It's, I, I like doing those type of things because it's like a working vacation. You, you know, you go and perform, you go to these summits and you meet up with the DJs and people like that. And then you have all day to go to the coffee shop and <laughs> <laughs> check out the menu. Right. Yeah. And uh, ride a bike. Pick some tulips, you know, whatever. Yeah, man, you got it all. Well, you hit most of the Amsterdam things. There are a couple of things that it's known for besides that. But I, uh, the other question I was going to ask you is why you chose Crazy as a single. Let's Good go. question. Uh, I don't normally gravitate towards doing co covers unless they're something really uh, iconic or phenomenal. And Way Cooler, my partner from Pretty Poison, you know Way. I do. Um, he's riding in the car one day. And he calls me on the phone and he said, you know, I just heard Seal crazy and I think it would be a great song for you to cover. And I was like, really? I go, oh, let me think about this. Okay. Were you listening to it and you like, you vibed through it and said, okay, yeah, I can, I can picture myself pulling this one off. I mean, I, I love the song to yeah. begin with. I, I've always loved that song. So I knew if I did it, it had to be something really special or don't do it at all yeah because it could have either been well received or you know ripped apart right. if it wasn't good but i've i've gotten some amazing feedback on it and lots of love around the world with mixed shows and radio and uh iheart radio a lot of the iheart stations across the country are playing it now so right it's five weeks in and we're we're really doing great with it so I'm really feeling blessed at this moment, and we do have a very cool video, so check it out. Well, do you mind if I actually pop it on? Can we share a little bit of that and show the show Please. The all right. I, Please. All right. Well, all right, folks. So let's uh, let's do Produced this. Produced by Ron Geffen, very talented guy. Wow. Out okay. Of um, all right. So what we'll do, we'll uh, we'll hide ourselves for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this video in. This is this is pretty remarkable. So, guys, if you didn't okay. catch that, um, this is Jade Starling's version of Seals Crazy.
so cool i love it man what a great video i you Thank know you. the green screen uh, dress was really cool too <laughs> yeah like you've got like the flames showing through oh the green screen yeah it basically was a green screen t-shirt yeah it just kind of had a nice little effect going on there i like the part you unzip the coat and the heck yeah the no all was falling it was pretty, pretty cool, pretty neat idea. That was actually Wade's idea. It was. I can't take credit for it. Man, he's a yeah, he's a, a crafty dude. I, um, he is a crafty dude. I don't know that I've ever seen you at one of these events without Way just like right there by your side. You guys are joined at the hip. It, uh, so, well, I mean, it, the last time I saw you in the sands, we were actually performing. Right. And usually, when we're we're performing, we're you you're going to see us together. Yeah. So. But last time, I actually just jammed with the band, and I think you did the same thing. Right. Yeah. So I should tell people about this. This is really cool. One thing I've noticed about you, you're so approachable. You know, whenever I see you, you are dressed to the nines. You've got just like the coolest outfits, and uh, and you've, you're just completely made up. It's a thousand degrees out in this humid area in Mexico, and you're still out there just complete. <laughs> you know, there's there's no off day. You know, I would just say Jade Starling, she does not show up in sweats, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but but you were out there with everybody. The people kept coming back and getting pictures with you, and it just seemed like you were very approachable. You didn't seem, you know, it's hard. I know when you got tons of people coming up and you just even if you got done performing but have you always been that way about just accepting your fans and receiving them that way yes in a very big way i mean it's all about the fans for me yeah. and as a matter of fact the other night we did a show in bakersfield last friday night and sometimes you know you go to the sound shack and things aren't going so well and then you start getting that anxiety like oh my god i hope the show sounds great when the people come in and sure enough bad sound show great show right it sounded awesome the fans were amazing and i did this meet and greet and i was getting pictures with everybody and the the kindness and the sweetness uh, from the fans is just like everything to me so i walked out of there that night and i'm just thinking you know i was being driven we were being driven back to the hotel and I was just thinking, wow, that's why I do what I do because I just love the fans so much, the energy, the love. It's what keeps me going, keeps me driven, you know? The fact that you don't take that for granted really says a lot, you know, because I think I think we're all very fortunate, right, that people still continue to come out and do these shows and support us. But um, how different was it back in late 80s when Catch Me I'm Falling was out and uh, you're doing all those shows. What was the, 
I mean, it, it was, because it was a different demographic, right? Everybody was a lot younger. Do you think that they were as appreciative then about the support that uh, they wanted to give you? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think so. I, I think, too, back then, because we didn't have social media, internet, Facebook, you know, all that stuff, Instagram, the, the fans were so loyal. The fact that they showed up, they bought your record. They went to the store and bought yeah. your record. I mean, it's like the loyalty and the fandom was so legit and so real back then. And I, I still think it is, don't get me wrong, but I just know back then it wasn't as accessible to them. So they'd have to go to greater lengths to go to your show, mm. to buy your record. You know, they actually have to get up off the couch, get yeah. in the car and go. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, Netflix has killed an awful lot of live shows. I've talked to a lot of promoters and bookers that said, you know, we're, we're sort of losing out to stranger things, you know, for a lot of our shows. <laughs> But, um, but you know, on the flip side, I mentioned Stranger Things. The cool thing about shows like that is that it introduces the music of our generation to the younger generation, and they're finding out about it. You know, I mean, you, I bet you see well, a lot. Speaking lo of, of yeah. Stranger Things, um, I know that that was number one on Netflix for quite a while. And then along came a little show called Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Right. I don't know if you saw it. Oh, I saw it. Yeah. Uh, very uh, disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Very disturbing, you know, crazy, but cool. Yeah. Uh, our song was featured in episode four. Mm. Uh, recently, the show has won a Golden Globe and is now nominated for five Emmys. Wow. So I'm going to be heading out to the Emmys in September. So I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty sure the show is going to win. That. Some. It was incredibly, it was very well done. And uh, it's like creepy, but cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the story itself. I mean, the, the story itself is is very sad right. if you think about it. Yeah. You know, especially for the families. But I think the way that they depicted the story, it gave some comfort, I think, to the families, you know. Yeah. It wasn't totally from his side, it was also from their side too. So well, um, well I know I know he had Evan Peters, the actor who did such a tremendous job in that story. I knew that he was definitely in therapy after that. Real, I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah, man. You, I am. Um, how does it work in a show like that where um, you've got publishers that are coming in there? They're wanting to license your music for a show like that. How do you find out about it? Do you get a chance to screen it before it even goes live, or what? How does that go? Well, about a year before this show actually aired. We got a call from our publishers and they said, Ryan Murphy is interested in catching me for uh, an American crime story. Uh, they're doing this, they're doing the Jeffrey Dahmer story. And we were just like, oh my God. All I heard was, I didn't even hear Jeffrey Dahmer. I just heard Ryan Murphy. And I was like, sign me up. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they told us about the scene. The scene was going to be actually about his first kill mm. he went to the club he picked up a guy took him back to the hotel he mixed up the drinks and he actually drank the wrong one he ended up roofing himself oh. so <laughs> it, it's so funny because you see like the guy he picked up and puts the radio on and catch me's on that's so right. the guy's like dancing and having a good time and uh, I guess Dahmer was kind of like all well, kind of messed up at that point, but he managed to drag himself back to the bathroom again, mix another drink for the guy, his date. So he gave him the drink, he drank it. They were dancing to catch me. It faded off. Things happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the song came back on. Oh my God. We were like, what? <laughs> so not only did it play once, it played twice. And when you, it was a gift. Yeah, it was a gift. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so very exciting. And you know, anytime we get a, a a call for any type of TV or movie, it's always exciting to get a placement. You yeah. Know? And I kind of knew about it, and I I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Really? Because yeah, like you, you heard about it long before it actually came out. But you knew about the scene. You'd read the scene. You knew how it was going to be displayed, and. I see in the chat here, it's funny, one of your biggest fans, Mike May, says, I'm creepy, but cool, too. <laughs> he 
<laughs> yeah. You are. Yeah, he's uh he's been at several of the shows that uh that we've all done together and I know that uh um when I've seen shows like that, like at the Sands and eighties uh, Lost Eighties Live, where people come up and they bring like the single, they bring the record up to have you sign, or they'll have you sign the album covers. Um, it's, it's really cool when they've got the original right from back in the day, and they've hung on. I love to that. The, yeah, it's cool. Oh, yeah. So uh, the DJ from uh, Bakersfield the other night, he had all his vinyl, all the originals. He had all the covers. So we were, we were signing everything for him. You mentioned the There's people that will actually send us, like they'll contact us, send us a box of their records. We'll sign them, send them back. Really? You send them back? Yeah, that, sure. That's so cool. I mean, a lot of people might be surprised how rare that is, you know, but it is, that takes a lot of effort and a lot of, uh, you know, that's dedication to your fans. It's great that you do it. What's the I know a lot of people do charge, they charge money to do like, meet and greets and right. all that stuff. I've never felt comfortable about charging for meet and greet because it just seems like the fans are the ones that keep you relevant. Sure. Why should you charge them to meet and greet? It just, yeah, well, I don't know. They've already bought a ticket. Like it's not, it's not fair to them. They already paid to come and see you perform. So yeah. why do they have to pay again to meet you? We're going to keep that sound bite, and all the other artists should actually listen to that and note. That's just me. No, I, I'm with you. You know, people, as you know, I mean, people are getting babysitters. They're getting hotel rooms. They're buying plane tickets or buying, you know, well, they, sometimes they fly in. They buy the tickets to come to the show. And then, yeah, to get hit with an exorbitant meet and greet charge, I, you know, I, I mean, uh, there are some groups that charge a lot yeah. of money for meet and greets. I mean, we could. Yeah. I mean, if promoters have said, you know, well, how much are you going to charge? Because, of course, they're going to put another charge on top of it so they can make money off yeah. of it. And I'm just like, we don't we don't like to charge. Well, let me ask you. I mean, you talked about sending stuff back. What's the craziest thing that a fan maybe has sent you to either as a fan, you know, token? Uh, yeah, can you even say it on the show? I mean, you're welcome to open up about it, but. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Uh, that they sent to sign or that they've just sent either yeah to sign or maybe it's just as a token as a gift you know that they're so appreciative of your talent uh i've gotten like nice bags of weed and oh, stuff like that in the mail nice <laughs> i mean that would be more of my favorite type of gifts to get yeah um as far as signing stuff i mean there might have been you know requests to sign like undergarments and things like that mike may but again mike may don't even think about it here in the chat that's a little pervy for me sure no <laughs> yeah well okay so i am um, you know in the meet and greet realm because at the sands one thing that they do i think it's a beautiful thing that they incentivize for like early people and people that book early to get an opportunity to have a special meet and greet backstage before or after a show but the thing that I've noticed with you about these other events, when it's a big group event, is that you're out there catching the other artists that perform. You're out there jamming with the bands. You're talking to people. Regardless of a meet and greet, you'll just walk out and take pictures with them. And uh, I think you know anybody that hasn't seen you live might really be surprised at what you devote to these people. Uh, you mentioned you were in Bakersfield on the weekend. I was, we were in Phoenix that night, and I met a bunch of people that had come from Bakersfield that day. Bakersfield's an interesting town, right? It is. It, it's it's the fans are insane there. Yeah, I mean, insanely good. Because there's nothing else there, right? So it's a desolate. It's like town. a small town, but it's really beautiful. Mountains and people are really lovely there. Do you have a favorite place that you play in the U.S.? Um, to be honest with you, every every place is my favorite. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. For different reasons, you know. Yeah. I mean, we're getting ready to do some major tour dates. I just got some more dates today. Uh, Palm Springs, Las Vegas, Tulsa, Denver, uh, Miami, L.A. Um, we go to L.A. quite a bit. Is that um, part of the freestyle freestyle show, the Explosion Tour? Yeah. Yeah, there's some freestyle explosions. There's also some freestyle festivals, okay. is what they're called. That, that would be a Bobby D presents. Sure. Um, and then there, there are a few other promoters we work with. Alan Beck, of course, freestyle explosion. Uh, Steve Robinson. 
who we love, yeah. Steve and Jackie, if they're listening, love yeah. you guys. Uh, we'll definitely be at the Sands. I don't know to what degree or capacity, but I love my Sanders, and I will be there. Whether I'm setting up on a beach with a boombox and singing, yeah. I will be there. Well, you know those artists, the other bands are going to drag you up to play, too. And you'll have... Oh, yeah. Do... I'm going to jam with somebody, or, you know, you know I'm going to be doing something. That event should be announced. Uh, for people that don't know, uh, Jade was just talking about the Sanders. This event, uh, it's November 4th, I think, through 9th or something like that. Yeah, if you go to the sands.rocks, you can see this. The event's crazy. It's an all inclusive, uh, week long event with the greatest bands from really from like late 70s to early 90s now. It's expanded. Yeah, out. Pat Benatar just being added. That's crazy. It's so good. There are so many so bands, exciting. so many artists this year, and um, and from all genres. That's the cool thing. You know, it's not just dance or hard rock or pop or anything like that. It's got the whole vast, you know, the, the, the array of music. And then besides He's that. He's got some freestyle in there too. You got yeah. Stevie B. That's right. You got uh, some hip hop. Yeah, last year. I mean, last it's year. It's a great lineup this year and it just keeps getting better. He keeps adding like every every time I look, there's a new addition to it. So, so it, it seems like this year is going to be bigger and better than ever. He does. He ups the ante every year. And it's at Planet Hollywood, so it's a killer resort. Gorgeous, man. It's a, uh, it's a great, great. And the first week of November is nice to get out too, because you know, most people during that time are either having, they're inundated with snow or it's the rainy season, you know? And so it's really nice to get to Cancun and just sit by the beach and hear great music and be pampered for a week. So go to the sands.rocks, everybody. You'll see Jade there yeah, dressed to the nines as she always is. <laughs> hey. You know, what's so great about that experience. Yeah. Uh, just the fact that you get to hang out with everybody, yeah. the, the bands, the fans, it's it's so like relaxing and beautiful. The weather was perfect yeah, last year. It's true. Um, it, it's just the, really the accessibility that you have to everybody and everything. And that's why I went to all the shows and I support all the other acts and Jumped on stage with a few of them. Yes, too. you and did. Yeah, I think within about an hour's time, the the jam that you did. I know that we had Flavor Flav, Flavor Flav get up, got up and played. They had Corey Glover from Living Color out there. They had you, um, all sorts you. of. Yeah, well, yeah, I, you know that day happened to be my birthday, which was super cool, and I got to you know play with Living Color with with Corey Glover on my birthday. That was a that was a bucket list item for me, you know. But, uh, he's so cool too, isn't he? Unbelievable. Yeah, the dude is like he is so down to earth. Like whenever I see him, it's just like yeah, like family. Like he's you, such a cool dude. Doesn't take anything for granted, you know. And the fact that the guy kind sings, like you, you're you are definitely like the cool dude there too. You're like with everybody and talking to everybody. I uh, see you. I I see you. I'm so grateful, man. I'm well, so our mutual friend, Kelly, I know that you were hanging back here in the cabana. It was so funny. And I hope it's okay that I mentioned this. She said, uh, well, you know, Jade, she has a very astute observation of people, you know, like when a lot of people, at, you know, when they get around other musicians or whatever, they'll make comments that are snarky. She said, no, Jade was very complimentary about everybody, but you made a comment about drummers. <laughs> and like, And she said, but, but she said, Jade that made an observation that drummers always have hemorrhoids. And I was like, what? <laughs> and she said, is that true? Did I say that? <laughs> like, uh, I said, I, I don't know I that. I think I said that because <laughs> I know that our drummer, Bobby Corden, back in the day, yeah. he always had issues with hemorrhoids. I know we won't mind me saying oh my that. God. I know a lot of drummers from sitting in the same spot on a little stool. Yeah. It can be. I, I've been disastrous I'm not, after I'm, so many years, right? I'm knocking on wood, man. I swear I've never had it happen yet. But of course, I say it. I'm sure this week, you know, it'll happen. I'm going to get hemorrhoids from the uh, the throne. But so far, knock on wood, I'm, I'm good. But it was a funny, a funny <laughs> thing. She said, "Is that true? Like Jade? Jade seems to know this, but I um, the touring thing. You are a killer drummer, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. You. I, you exert so much energy. God, I, I just... It's, like, amazing to watch. I'm so you grateful. Are, Thank I, you. I don't want to steal you for our group. <laughs> <poison>. <laughs> I, 
I, well, a lot of times you don't have live drums, right? You've got the, like, you know, sort of a dance track that, that you guys are performing on, right? So, um, well, last year. Well, you know I, I rock out too, so I, I do I know that. Use you for more of my rock. Let's do it, man. I'm, you know, whatever. There's another bucket list item. I get to go up there and rock with Jade Starling. Excuse me one second. I'm yeah. going to close this door. Sure. Hold on. Yeah, while she does that and pops away, I was going to tell you guys, if, you, um, if you've not done this, do me a favor. I'm going to have this link up here below. Okay. I, um, I'm going to have people go to this link because um, the show itself, um, like I said, we've got like 277 episodes that I've done in the last couple of years. They've got, I've got some great episodes coming up. If you guys go to accesskevin.com, you can go and look through this entire archive of all these episodes. Um, and I'm sure a lot of these guys are people that you, Jade, you know. Um, I was really fortunate, you know, to have some interviews with like Tawny Katane just before she passed away and some oh, other, some other. It, God rest her soul. Totally. And I think what a sweet girl. she really, really was, man. And, and I didn't know her until the panda, until the, the Sands. That's the first place I got to meet her. And, uh, yeah. I'm, I really. Very nice. Very nice girl. I've met her a couple times. Yeah. Oh, I'm, very sad. It, um, you know, as we get older. It's more. As you get older, I don't get older. You don't. I, it's and I, this is the Speak truth. Yeah, no, man. I, I'm telling you, guys. You don't realize this, but Jade, she's 27 now, and she's uh, yeah, <laughs> she, I uh, yeah, I feel like I'm getting older, but I'm never gonna act younger or act older, you know. So that's the thing. But, um, but at these events, we notice that our heroes, our contemporaries, the people that you know we held in high regard from that era the MTV generation, they're going to start going, you know? And so things like the Sands are really special. Some of these festivals, you never know, right, what tomorrow holds. And so I, I recommend for people to just, you know, pack aside a little bit of time for yourself so you can go spoil yourself and, and hang out, you know, because it's not even just musicians, right? Like Steve and Jackie, Steve has been putting together all these uh, these actors from the those eras and and personality. Oh, Andrew McCarthy. That's a new one. That was super cool. Absolutely. Do you want, I have a trivia. All right. A little trivia. Guess who was an extra in Mannequin? Were you an extra in Mannequin? Were you really? That all right? If we pop the scene, uh, do you know the the scene well enough to be able to point us there? Uh, no. Okay. Right. I mean, I could say, hey, I was an extra in Mannequin. I yeah. Mean, you know, I, I was standing about maybe two or three feet from him, yeah. but it was him and Kim Cattrall, actually. And we were kind of like, wow, because they were really big stars back then. Right. And uh, <clears throat> it was filmed in Philadelphia in, in the front of the Watermakers building. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that was the, the store that they used to film the, the movie in. Really? Okay. So there was a window scene when she came to life, when the mannequin came to life. And uh, we were just in the crowd. So I was just in a big crowd scene, but I was an extra mannequin and that's what I tell people. I think it'll be great if Andrew McCarthy, when he gets to the, the sands and he tells everybody, you know, the really cool trivia thing is that we actually had Jade Starling as an extra in our movie, you know, and, and uh, I'm sure by the pool, they have the nighttime movies, you know, displays. And so what you can well, get up he there. He needs to know. He needs to be in the know. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he knows. I'm sure he's gone through the IMDb. He's found you there. You know, he tells all of his kids, you know, believe it or not, guys, Jade Starling was in my movie. And, uh, but did you have a, I know, right? from that era, because um, MTV was huge. That movie, like the John Hughes movies were always such a big deal. Were you, uh, you know, were you a fan of, of like going out and, and seeing the movies and catching a lot of those artists? Because like psychedelic furs were huge. Well, we we actually had uh, Cash Man Falling was in hiding out with John Cryer. Mm. Wow. And we went to the premiere in Los Angeles, and I met John Cryer. And I guess he was kind of close to me when he was talking because it was loud, and he spit in my eye. Ooh. When he was talking. And I was like, <laughs> I said, yeah, oh, dude, you just spit my eye. And he said, well, now that we've exchanged bodily fluids, why don't we get to know each other better? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, no, Ducky. Nice try. Nice try, buddy. Oh, Sorry, Ducky. You're, you're an East Coaster, aren't you? Like, always have been. What's that? You're, you're all, you've always been East Coast, haven't you? Have you always been an East Coaster? 
Um, well, I'm kind of more bi-coastal okay. because I do spend a lot of time out in L.A. Yeah. as well. But, yeah, I mean, I'm a Jersey girl. My roots are planted here. Uh, from New York, originally my family, but we moved to New Jersey as good little New Jersey girls do. They become bi-coastal. Right. So. I just I, I feel like I'm like tri-coastal at this point. I'm I'm in Texas a lot too because we also have a house there. And okay. I'm just everywhere, Kevin. <laughs> well, I was thinking more about Ducky spit in your eye. You don't spit in an East Coaster's eye. You Ducky know, like, spit in my yeah. eye. Yeah, Jersey girl, she could throw down. I could tell. I'm the girl. The ducky spit in her eye. Yeah, man. Like, more trivia. You know, uh, I know that Mike was out here on the chat. He actually hosts trivia nights on Tuesday night, so he must be prepping his show right now. And maybe he can throw some of those questions out there for uh, hey, the show. Hey, I got, I got some nice little trivia. There you go. Can, yeah. You can put in there for sure. Yep. Trying to think of some other good stories about, like, 80s stuff. I mean, there's so many. I mean, I, I can remember being on the set for two videos we did for Virgin. We did... Uh, Catch Me Falling at Nighttime, and both were choreographed by Paula Abdul. Really? And Paula came in and was apparently breaking up with her boyfriend at the time and was really like, she would be into it, and then she would be like, I'll be right back. And then she went out and she would like cry or oh. like, I heard her like fighting with her boyfriend on the phone or whatever. And I mean, I just have some interesting kind of... <laughs> stories about people that we played with along the along the way what? another good one was we we were touring with debbie gibson it was debbie gibson and pretty poison so okay. every night i mean we were like the antithesis of debbie right she was like this really good girl and i was like this very like kind of devilish girl yeah. <laughs> I would be like pulling people up on stage and doing all this naughty stuff so one night i pulled up I don't know how many people on stage. They were so upset with me. So her mother, who was actually the road manager, God rest her soul. Oh, my God. She pulled me aside. She said, Jade, I, I love you. I appreciate what you do. Oh, I love your energy. But you have to stop pulling people up on stage because you're upstaging my daughter. Oh, poor <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> poor, poor sweet Debbie. <laughs> no, and then to add insult to injury, my bass player at the time, his, you know, like when you tune your bass and the wires from your string sticks out yeah. at the end of the neck? Yeah. He walks by Mrs. Gibson and he catches her sweater Ooh. and he keeps walking and oh, he ends up pulling her sweater. Like, oh no. He walked away for like, it seemed miles. Oh this man. This poor lady's like, stop, stop. <sighs> They hated us. Oh, man. We got kicked off the tour after that. Did you really? Like, well, that's so funny. We did. You know, because I think of Debbie. I'm De still friends with Debbie, though, to this day. I mean, I just talked to her the other day. She, uh, you know, we've done a good handful of shows with her, too. It's, it's amazing how both of you guys are so vibrant and energetic you know there's no we, we grew up together and Tiffany too I'm yeah. friends with her also yeah so. I you know um so back in those days how many times I've been called Tiffany I should make a shirt I'm not Tiffany uh, I'm Jade that's a good one yeah actually so she says to me I told her that she says Jade oh my god I wish someone would think I was you yeah <laughs> uh, with back in no, but people always mistake her her music for Debbie Gibson they said something about, oh, we love your song, Out of the Blue. And oh, she said, no. no, that's the blonde one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's tough, isn't it? Because they, they really were lumped together in the same – they were doing the shopping mall tours, right? And I don't think Debbie was doing the shopping mall with her. Okay. Uh, they did some other stuff after that. I've, I've done a few of those mall shows with her, though. Were they crazy? Crazy. I was actually doing a tour back then, New Kids on the Block. Tiffany and Pretty Poison. Wow, that's that's mega tour. That's the T Swift. It was of... like all you could hear was girls screaming the yeah. whole time. I dream for us. I dream that. Like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> I feel like the Beatles or something. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, speaking of that, of girls. I mean, you um, you are a dedicated mom. I've I've seen pictures where you've got your incredibly beautiful daughter who looks like you guys are twins together, right? Is that right? The the gal that I've seen. You? It, it, I've seen pictures. I assumed that she was like, but she's not related. I to don't have any children. Oh no my daughter. god! Wow. There's somebody like, well, uh, I, then foot and mouth. There were some pictures that I had seen. I thought on social media 
that I thought was your daughter. Your daughter okay. Doll. That you know of? No. Yeah. That it works for men. Well, I yeah. think I would know. <laughs> I think you would know. So no children at all. No. No. Everything's still intact. Okay. All right. I I won't no, ask. No kids. I won't ask you to prove it. There there are girls that try to look like me. So I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you. I've could... got I've got something called the Jade Brigade. Really. Yeah, that, that and so they they do the same hair. They get the they dye their hair red and they try to dress like me, and it's really cute. You could actually. So maybe you were seeing some J for Gators. I'm sure that's it. Yeah. Well, uh, was there um, was this always a decision for you to decide not to be sort of a, a parent role as a musician? You just or. You know, a couple things. Um, I think because the demanding schedule of being in a band and touring and it's almost like for me it was a choice yeah just to continue with my career because I would never want to half-ass anything right. especially being a parent I love children and it just didn't really happen for sure. us I mean I've been with my husband for 17 years and I wow. knew him I knew him probably five years prior to that so Basically, when we got married, he was in the Navy, and I said, well, do you want to have kids, or do you want to have sex? <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And I guess you know what the answer was. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that sex life. That's good stuff. And it's still happening, and it's still, you know, like the first time every time, so... So talking about that, about having a relationship as a musician, right? Not necessarily the sex life, but I mean, that's, it's a demanding career and it's uh, one that has to be met with such respect, you know, and appreciation. I mean, you're, you're, I know for me, I was married 28 years to my childhood sweetheart. We're still dear friends. And she was very trusting because I, I was not a player. I, you know, I mean, I certainly flirted, you know, and all that kind of stuff, but I knew that um, at the end of the day, I didn't want to, you know, messing around with somebody that wasn't going to be there by my deathbed, right? When I'm dying of cancer, but, uh, but, but, uh, but your, your supportive 17 year husband, um, he had to probably come in realizing I'm with this mega starlet who's gorgeous and in front of adoring fans all the time. What kind of conversation do you have with a new partner that way, just to be able to set the table saying, Hey, just so you know, I'm loyal, but here's the, st here's the story. I mean, I think from the beginning, actually, when we met, he didn't know who I was. Really? He had no idea. He saw me and he just said, that that girl's going to be my wife. Someday. Wow. He like fell in love with me and he chased me for a few years till I came around. But he, he knew that my career, unfortunately, Fortunately for him, is always number one. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's my love. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. He is everything to me. But I mean, my career is almost like a marriage as well. And I have to give it a lot of attention. And it's like my baby. Yeah. That's the baby I had, my career. Sure. So the path I chose. He's a very cool dude. He does understand. He does get upset with me sometimes because I'm not around as much as I'd like to be. But at the same time he's very proud of me and you know when we do get together it's great and i think i'm the one that's the lucky one really because i have a guy that totally gets me yeah. and understands me and trusts me that's huge. And trust is a huge issue it's issue huge. when you're on the road yeah. because obviously there's a lot of temptation there's a lot of people trying to get with you because you're a singer or you're a drummer or you're right. a musician but you know I, I never like liked somebody because they were an artist. I really look to see who that person is, you know, who who their heart is and how genuine they are. That's what attracts me. Yeah. Initially, you know, you look you like somebody because they look good, but you also want to make sure their heart is good and and they're a beautiful person inside and out. And that's what I look for. I would imagine that, you know, you see that because you know that, right? I mean, in the industry, we know that some, you know, there are people that are attractive and they are not attractive inside, right? So, um, but in the end, we're all human. We're all, you know, we've, we've all got emotions and, and you know, responsibilities and, you know, the, the, 
the same kind of challenges that a lot of people that aren't in the business have, you know, taxes and, and, you know, parking tickets and all the other garbage that goes along with being human. Right. But, but so uh, true. you, uh, do you ever get to take him out on the road with you to see some, some of these big shows? Uh, he doesn't come on the road with me as much, uh, because he has a very demanding job. He, he actually works in the oil fields in Midland, Texas. He has a great job. He's doing some automation. He's got like patents on, you know, cutting edge things that are going on right now. And right he's doing his dream job and I support that hundred percent. So he did come down. He had his, his birthday on Valentine's day this past February. So he came to the show. We had a show here in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. It was awesome. <clears throat> we had George Lamond and the cover girls and pretty poison. It was like a birthday party for way cooler. And my husband, my husband's on the 14th Way was on the 13th. So it nice. was, it was a big party night. A lot of our hometown fans were there. It was a great time. That's... So it, it's not an all the time thing that I get to bring my husband, but when he comes, he has a great time. I make sure of it. Yeah. That's super cool. And great that you guys have the conversation, you know, I mean, really the, the fact that you both have independent passions and, uh, you know, it makes it a little bit easier, you know, so that one's not dependent on the other one for fulfillment. But, uh, and as far as you're it's really hard too, like when, when you're at the show and the fans are so like demanding of your attention, it's right. like, I feel bad if I'm ignoring him because I have to do a meet and greet. Sure. So that's why sometimes it's better yeah, not uh, to create that environment because sure. I don't want to make anyone feel left out you know what i mean very respectful that is i mean i you know i would assure i'm sure after 17 years he probably realizes jade's got to do her thing this is what you know he probably doesn't take too much offense but it's good that you opportunity you have that opportunity for your fans you know the uh well uh, it's important you know what it's my job yeah it's my it's my life it's my livelihood and i need to be present and i need to be a hundred percent with the fans and any given night doing a show in any given town, getting that love and that energy from the audience, from the fans, is everything. Yeah. That's what makes the show so incredibly rewarding is what you're getting back. Totally. Oh man. Like I'm giving, but they're giving back. Oh yeah. And it's it's amazing. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. This this backdrop that's right behind me, right here. This was our show on Friday night in Phoenix. And I snapped this just before we started playing because they were going nuts in there. It was packed in there. And as you know, like in the 80s, that the people that sort of relive those moments when they come to these shows, they're not thinking about all the stuff that's in their outside life. They're not thinking about their taxes or politics or any of that kind of stuff. They get to put it away for a couple of hours. This place was so on fire. And I, so I snapped this and I was, um, I thought, you know what? I kind of want to have this as a reminder of how fortunate we are all the time. You know, I, I, I um, it's kind of like the little, you know, post-it note that I put up just as a reminder, like, you're a very fortunate dude. You know, I, uh, I have a ritual every day. I have this little gratitude journal and I go through it. It's a three minute gratitude journal that I talk about. It asks list three things that you want to let go of three things that you're going to focus on. And, um, something that you can find that you're grateful for today that you can just focus on, you know, and I'm curious to know, you know, cause you've talked about being respect, you know, respectful to fans and appreciative. So, um, do you have any kind of rituals or anything like that to kind of start your day off that way? I do the same thing. I mean, it's, it's a little bit different than yours. It's not exactly a journal, but I do like my, uh, affirmations every day. You know, yeah. and how I, I am connected with God, and that's an important part of my life as well. I pray, I pray, I meditate, and I do focus on the blessings and rewards that I have, and I don't take that lightly or for granted. Yeah. And I just feel like sometimes I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world because I can do what I love to do. But I also feel a connection to God, and I do feel a spiritual connection in the universe. And I, I do these positive affirmations like, 
how you would see yourself up in the stars and you see yourself surrounded by happy, joyful people like the audience. Yeah. And it just, I feel it lifting me up, like lifting my soul. So whenever I'm feeling kind of down or whatever, I do go to these positive affirmations and a white light that I imagine is coming down and just totally encompassing my whole being. I, I feel like being positive is just, a, it's a lesson I practice every day. Yeah. Staying positive, putting out more positive vibrations for other people. And I feel like you put it out, it comes back. Yeah. And I also feel like when you visualize things in your life, see it, be it, mm. you know, like you want success, but you do have to have to sort of, uh, visualize it. And, uh, there's a word that you're I'm manifesting, using. right? Yes. Manifesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I do daily. I'm manifesting all of the positive things that I want in my life and all the good things I want in people close to me also their lives and good health. I focus so much on healthy lifestyle, staying healthy, making sure everyone around me is healthy. Very important. I mean, way went through cancer six years ago. He wow. had uh, neck and throat cancer. And of course, when someone close to you goes through cancer, it's you're not going through it, but you're going through it. Yeah. Like I was so stressed. I lost like 10 pounds. All I did was cry every oh, day. Man. So well, he was lucky to have his wife, Patty, who is our road manager and my best friend, Patty Andrews. She, she's a wonderful wife. She was quite a rock for him during his treatments. And I'm proud to say that he is cancer free. Oh, praise beautiful. God. Yeah. And doing great and thriving. Love so. that, man. Well, please do me a favor and, and squeeze that man for me away as an incredible human being. Let him know how every day. Yeah. I'm grateful to know, you know, that he's in remission and he's, uh, I mean, it, I, I have uh, a strong belief in that, that power of positive prayer and affirmation, you know, and, and the fact that, uh, that he got through that testament to Patty, but also a testament to you and your support. So I think, yeah, it's rough. Well, he has a cousin who's a priest too. So he actually prayed on him or prayed over him, like faith healing, and wow. did that pretty often through his treatment. And I believe that that helped too. And it's also that the power of positive yeah. thinking. You know, uh, and because we see people go the other way, right? When you surround yourself with negativity, then you're bound to just tunnel downward. So I, uh, my kids are pretty sick of me talking about it, you know, but that gratitude journal is what I have to start my day with, you know, just at least you gotta send me, send me that. Cause I'd be really interested yeah. in uh, seeing how you do that. It, it just takes a couple minutes. Cause other, if it didn't, I would probably wouldn't do it, you know, but I, I, uh, I try to, I'm really fortunate. I moved to the mountains here in New Mexico and I'm up about uh, nice. 8,000 foot elevation and I'm nice. so, uh, you know, so I walk right into the forest and for me, that's where I can get quiet. And I can think and I can write. I need that. I, I feel a little landlocked here. I kind of miss the ocean a little bit, you know, but I am. Um, I, uh, You're near Texas, aren't you? Um, I am very close to Texas. Yeah. Yeah. We, and we, I know. We, we've been playing a ton of shows there, too. We were in El Paso last week and we were in Dallas, Fort Worth the week before and Houston, San Antonio. Yeah, we just played there not too long ago, too. El, yeah. El Paso. That's another one. You mentioned Bakersfield. Well, oh, we live in Midland also. Right. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that uh, There's something about Texans. They just know how to show their appreciation, you know, in, in fine form. I am. Um, I was going to say one thing that I do on the show, and it's it, um, it's never meant to kind of take you by, you know, guard, uh, off guard. I love to find out people that think they know Jade what their guilty pleasures are. So somebody that thinks they know you, but what might be the surprise be what might they be surprised to find out about you, whether it be style of music you like or foods or, you know, like, you know, because I know you, you're a very healthy person. Sometimes people talk about their their, you know, their sneak away to McDonald's to grab a Sunday or or they'll they you know, they you might, you know, being a dance, you know, music performer. You know, if you've got a little Metallica in your playlist, something like that, you know, anything that might surprise I like me. all music yeah. and I, I love banging my head and I do rock. Yeah. I do have a rock band and 
It's called SIV, S-I-V, Sex in Violets. Wow. Not violence. Yeah. Violets, like flowers. Sex in Violets. Uh, we've been doing it since 97. We have an EP. I've been wanting to rock out, but every time I put something together and we, we try to get out there doing it, we get a call to do Pretty Poison. So of course. It's something that we want to do. It's something that not many people have seen me do, but I can rock. Yeah. And I've been compared like a female sound garden. So oh, you can imagine. Wow. Very cool. Wow. I mean, it's it's what I've always wanted to do is rock. Really? But sometimes things change and directions change. And I like all types of music. I appreciate all types of music. But I do rock out. So maybe people don't know. They think she's freestyle, she's dance, she's house, club. I mean, that's what I'm most known for. But yeah. come see me rock out sometimes, bro. I love and, that. Uh, Sex you and know, violence. The real deal. I want, yeah, you know, can they find? I think we need to do something maybe in the sand. I'm down with that, man. You know, my we nickname is. put together something and just blow people's minds. I would love it. I, I'm down. I, you mentioned Soundgarden. There's a band that never really took off in the U.S. that I'm a huge fan of. Um, they're most known in Canada. I'm actually, as a fan, because we had four days off from this tour that we're on, I'm going to Canada tomorrow. I'm going to go to Toronto to see oh, this wow. band called Big Wreck. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Big Wreck? Yeah. A cool, incredible band. And the singer looks like latest era Chris Cornell, you know, audio slave Ooh. era Chris Cornell. He sounds and looks a lot like Chris, but is one of the greatest guitarists I've ever seen. The band is so wow. good. Big hooks. I'll send you some stuff. So check them out. Big Please Rick. do. Yeah. And then, I'm a huge uh, fan of Soundgarden. Oh, me too. God, we need to do that at the Sands. I actually went to uh, the Hollywood uh, Cemetery. I don't know if he's officially buried there, but you know that Hollywood Cemetery? Yeah. There's like a... There's a guitar. There was a guitar there, and maybe I don't think he's he's officially laid to rest there, but they do have something that looks like it is like his plot. Oh man! I went there. I laid on his grave. I cried. Mm. I have all these pictures. It's crazy, but I was pretty torn up by his death. I'm I, with you. I really took it hard. I, I I just saw him perform just before he passed as well in in uh, Eugene, Oregon. I did too, not God. just, but a yeah. few months back. Before, it was, it, you know. it, it uh, yeah, man, what a gift that guy. He seems so vibrant, you know. Yeah, like, right. No, no one could have ever guessed. I I had I have a funny, interesting show or conversation about Chris. So his wife, ex wife, Susan Silver. Um, her management company was signing a band that I was in to a record I know deal. Her too. Okay, yeah. So Susan, um, you know, back in those days, he had she managed everybody. She Pearl did, Jam, right? Yeah, all those bands. Around two thousand nine, Chris came through Portland, and a band that I was in, a female fronted heavy rock band, kind of like a modern Foo Fighters, female fronted Foo Fighters. We were opening for Chris's band. And his manager came in and said, hey, look, you know, Chris is coming in a minute. Don't make eye contact with him. Don't talk. I go, no, oh, I, no God. eye contact, really? And so well, I'm sitting in the green room, and he comes down and sits on the couch next to me. And I, I'm ignoring him, right? And he's like, Try not to look at him. He's like, what's up, man? I go, oh, I'm, I'm not supposed to talk to you, bro. And he goes, what? And I said, yeah, your manager said, don't make eye contact. And he said, oh, brother, man, listen, it's because the last time I was in this room here in Portland, a sheriff came in and served me papers because it was in the height of my addiction. I got really messed up and I'm down in South America with Soundgarden. And apparently I married another girl on the beach. And so my wife, <laughs> he said, what? yes, he said Wait, he was fucked up. Got an old though because he married oh Nikki. yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was, it was, was crazy. no, he was completely, oh, so he was just so high. He... Yeah. Didn't know. And he said, so my manager's looking out for me. Don't sweat it. We're all good. And he went out and killed the show. And it was oh, it, know. like, you know, there's nothing that guy couldn't sing. He had the craziest range and he's a great guitarist. A lot of people didn't realize what a great guitarist he was, but I, I mean, how cool would it have been to see a pairing with you two? Oh, wait. Are you talking about audio slaves? No, actually, I mean, his, when he would actually play with Soundgarden, too, and play guitar with Kim Thale, I thought he was just a killer rhythm guitarist, you know? 
but yeah, no, this was his solo career on the uh, oh, sun, the, sun, the sun shower. Yeah, that sun shower tour. Yeah, like, yeah. But uh, but Audio Slave too, amazing, right? You know, I but I could totally picture you and Cornell duets. That would be it. Who would have? Who would you have paired yourself with if you could find anybody in history? Who would you collab with, living or dead? Well, I've always idolized Stevie Nicks. I mean, wow. I used to go. My first concert, my parents took me to see Fleetwood Mac. That was the first show. Wow. I, yeah, that I can remember. You know, yeah. like a rock concert. Yeah. Um, I was always in love with Stevie, and I remember I I used to dress I dressed like her for Halloween, and I was obsessed with her. And I I guess I kind of still am. Yeah. So she would be somebody I would love to. You know, someone who's like a, a, you know, she's like an iconic rock goddess, mm, you know. I yeah. would love to do something with her, but I mean, there's so many people I would love to collaborate with. I mean, I, it's I, funny. I can hear some Stevie in your voice now, now that I think about it, because the range is very similar, you know. Like when I hear your stuff, when I was listening to Crazy, that has a real similar, you know, like sort of range as Stevie. Have you met her? Well, this is what someone said to me too that it reminded them of Stevie Nicks. I was like, "Really? Wow! Oh my God! Well, it just that's came like out. the ultimate compliment." It came out of your I spirit. I wasn't trying, but hey, yeah. if anybody hears any kind of Stevie influence, I am honored. That is, not a, worth yeah, it. man. Have you met her? No, not, I haven't. I would yet. love to. Yeah, what? Well, she seems like she would be really cool, but I'm sure everybody wants to meet her. You know. Yeah, but not everybody's in the kind of position that you are, you know. I mean, I would imagine that, uh, you know, get out there. She is coming. She's actually coming uh, to Philadelphia. Her she solo, her solo show. I think she's touring with Billy Joel. Actually. Oh, that's right. Okay. <clears throat> well, so that would be a pretty uh, amazing concert right there. Big time. Yeah, get on your contacts. You know what? Sometimes you know these people are just so iconic yeah They're just so big it's like i don't want to be some pain in the ass to them i would rather meet them on a nice yeah. neutral right not, not foundation i don't want to be a groupie i i'll rather admire them from afar and just like well, google over them but uh, yeah i wouldn't mind meeting i have met a lot of people though yeah sure. sometimes when you meet your your idols you're you're disappointed because you think that they're going to be so cool and they're actually not. That's true. I think I, sometimes I just rather worship from afar. That's you know we both know right that that people's expectations as a fan, um, and I don't like to call like the people that come to our shows fans because I really feel like they are they're friends, friends they're supportive yeah family right yeah I mean really I I, do, I I do feel that way. But from me, Sanders are definitely like family. Yeah, that is family. They would. I, they, there is a family connection with that group that they will look out and they'll take care of you. When I see Sanders at other shows, when they show up and they've got their Sands shirt on, but they're trying to buy you drinks or they're trying to, you know, like just shower you with attention because they feel connected to you. But I, uh, I've had Sanders like in the last couple of years show up at our shows in like various places. I know they came, they came to Miami. I'm pretty sure they came to Phoenix. We were just talking about Phoenix. Oh, yeah. There's some Last Sanders right, right there. There's some Sanders there. Yeah. Patricia. Yeah, there Patricia. Was, there okay. Sanders and then uh, a couple shows. Even New York, some, some Sanders were showing up. I have to say that the loyalty of the Sanders and how they are so devoted and how they follow the groups that they love. And they've accepted me. And I, I get inboxed all the time by various sanders and they're just like so lovely and wow. i feel like they're my family isn't that great like my close friends you know it's awesome he built uh, steve he built a culture that is really amazing that it's become a community he really did. we're playing uh parker colorado like denver suburb next week on the on the 8th oh, cool. And uh, I know a ton of Sanders are coming out there, and they always wear their shirts. It's so awesome. It is really cool. Yeah, so they've kind of like made these little milestones along the way until that event happens, you know. So I, I know this sounds like a huge promotion for the Sands, but you know, it is an awesome event. It's okay. Yeah. No. I, I will promote the Sands. I will promote Steve and Jackie Robinson. I will promote Sanders. I will promote everything that has to do with it because it's 
probably the greatest experience that you'll ever have. Yeah, I, that's what it, that's that becomes their slogan because that's what everybody says every year, you know. And we've got twenty some shows in November coming up in Canada, and wow. but we haven't they haven't committed to the dates yet, and oh, so. You're are you going to beat the stand? I'm planning on it as long as. I hope so. Yeah, me too. I want to see you. We got to rock out. I, I want to do this too. We're going to plan our little hard rock set together, right? Me so. too. We need to do that. Man. I hope that you can get there, even if you come for a couple of days. Yeah. You have to come. That's my hope. I I, I told Steve, I, I'm i keeping my fingers crossed. I can't. We're going out with Glass Tiger, Man Without Hats, and the Spoons, um, along with a flock of seagulls. And it's like a full Canadian North uh, November tour. And so How's Mike doing? He's great. Really, really well. Yeah. Honestly, between last year and I now. I had a message with him uh, not too long ago, maybe a couple months ago. Couple, you know, we usually kind of check in every couple months. I know that he wasn't doing well and I asked you yep. how he was feeling. He says he's doing good again, so I'm so glad. So glad much better. You wouldn't believe it. You would never believe how much better he is. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm he's, so glad. he's kicking butt. But we're going back to do another crazy long Europe tour again and like 17 days oh, straight, awesome. I think, in uh, in the UK. So we'll see if uh, we can all survive that one. But um, yeah, I'll I let it, so. I'll let him know you said hey. And hopefully, oh, please. you know, yeah, send my love and happy to hear that he's doing well and thriving and you guys are kicking ass. We're knock on wood, man. We got to, we got to keep it going. Right, girl. You guys are like one of my all time favorite bands. Do you know that we shared a percussionist, right? I didn't know that. Did you know Kaya? Were you in the band when Kaya I, was playing percussion? I wasn't, but I knew about Kaya. Yeah. That, and at the same time? So, or Mike and I, we laugh, we talk about it. We talk about Kaya because he's just so crazy and so fun to have in the group. And when Kaya was playing with us originally in Philadelphia, he had an opportunity to go on tour with Flock of Seagulls. Okay. And of course, we were like, you have to go. Yeah. This is amazing. I mean, fly butterfly. You have to go. <laughs> So, I mean, it's a great story to to have shared a player with your group. That's well. cool. Man. Well, hopefully you and I get to share a stage, too. I, I know, would love it. I want to rock we with you. We have a great picture together. You yep. saw the one with Steve, you and me, yep. and, and Julie Brown. Yep, that's right. You saw it, right? I did see it, yeah. As a matter of fact. It's I, such an awesome picture. Like, I, I share it quite a bit because it was actually Steve's birthday, and oh, that was the picture I chose. To that's cool. Man, what a fun, a fun experience. You know, Julie Brown's another one. You know, every time she's there, it's just, yeah. You know, I, I taught her, I taught her how to play drums. The first Dominican Republic show, uh, the first Sands gig, and I was there too. Yep. yep. And her husband, uh, you know, he's Martin. Has said, so cool. He's uh, he's nice like, people. Good he, people. He said it's a curse and a blessing because she won't stop now. <laughs> and so all the neighbors in Italy, they're like, you know. You know, we'd like a little bit of a rest, right? We're here next to the lake, and we'd like some quiet, but now she just wants to rock. So, but, uh, Julie Brown, man, love that girl, too. I think it's so great to see everyone, you know, I mean, I knew I knew her back in the MT, Club MTV days. We did that show, like, three times. Mm. So, you know, I've known her since back in the day, and I... In fact, her and I were like laughing and just like, oh my God, you look so good, girl. You look so good. You know, we're both like throwing compliments back and forth. And I just think it's so amazing. Yeah. It, the time that's passed and how great she looks and, and just you. how great everybody looks. I mean, I, I just see everybody and everybody's thriving and doing well. And it's it's very heartwarming to see. I yeah. Mean, it's, well, it's been a while, but it doesn't feel like it's been that long. You know? The 80s were good to you guys, for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna just... the, 80s were, the 80s were so good. And yeah. Just so like, it, there's something about the 80s that, that for some reason has stayed relevant. Like you go back to all the other eras of music and it seems like the 80s have not really disappeared. Right. There's still a lot of focus on 80s shows, 80s bands and Thank God. You know. Yeah. No it's, kidding. It's crazy. It's a blessing, though. I, yeah. I think it's amazing. I'm hanging on as long as we can for that stuff, you know? Absolutely. So, I mean, we came in in the later part of the 80s. We were like 87, 88. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's groups that came in in the early 80s, like, 
Eurythmics and Thompson Twins and even you guys. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there were groups that I was just following and so, like, blown away by the, the music and the style and the, the keyboards. Right. And, you know, everything was kind of going electro and the direction the music was going was so energetic and that's the, the Fine, energy you know? yeah and you you the energy is unbelievable you, you, and you channel and still is that's why people love the 80s i think and you you know and you channel it too i mean the stuff like the cover that you just did the the crazy cover of the seal tune it has a little element from that but the big dance track i mean it's got just you know a lot of i think momentum. it was the 90s i, I forget what year it yeah, was that came out in the 90s late 80s or 90s but but, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, too. Yeah. There is kind of an 80s kind of feel to it. And especially I your version that. of it. You know, especially, like, you you definitely bring that there. But uh, what what's next for you? Are you gigging? Like, uh, uh, oh, my God, we're, we're gigging so much. In fact, we're trying to balance some stuff like you were just talking about with gigs. We just got hit with all these gigs in June, and we already had quite a few. So sure. it was like now we have to think how we're going to map right. this and make it work because the week of uh, the 7th of June we're in uh, it's going to be weird it's going to be like a Denver and then back to Vegas and then to uh, oh, what did I just say somewhere in California I was just talking about in the desert what did I yeah. say? Palm Springs All right. yeah. then we come back to Vegas do the show there and then fly out at, uh, to Yuma. Oh my so God. it's just wow. like trying to make it work yeah. and still be able to enjoy some of my time in Vegas because I had planned to see a lot of my friends and DJ friends and stuff. Um, coming up, just uh, a lot of New York stuff, some California stuff, uh, finishing our album, finishing the tracks I'm doing with Marcus Schultz. And recently, I've been asked by Rob Bass, you know, it takes yeah. two, right? Uh, we just did a show with Rob the other night, and he had asked me about the redo that he's doing on It Takes Two, and he asked me if I would be interested in singing the hook. Wow. Right on. So I've actually jumped on stage with him and done it live a couple times. So I'm thinking that this might happen, wow. so that's very exciting to Heck me. Yeah. Um, I'm also doing some hosting. I'm hosting a show out in uh, Providence, Rhode Island on the 14th of April. Okay. And then we're coming back to Boston a couple weeks later to be on the Freestyle Explosion. The reason I'm hosting is because you know about the clause of the radius, right? Oh, of course. Like yeah. if you play yeah. within 90 miles within a certain... Or is it 90 days, 100 miles, something like that? That sounds right. So it turned out the the uh, promoter was gracious enough. He asked me, well, would you host the show? Because I really want you on the show. And I'm going to perform crazy. Okay. So I won't be performing as Pretty Poison. I'll be performing crazy right as on. Jade Starling. I'm going to open the show with the video and perform. So I'll be introducing all the acts that night. I'm going to jump on stage with Rob Bays and sing the takes two. Oh, that's great. So, uh and then in between that, just trying to finish our album and probably drop another single in the summer or whenever this crazy thing. Hey, look, I'll ride the crazy train as long as yeah. it's running. Yeah, as you should. You know, I mean, you're... It's going to radio. I mean, this could... The, the, the promoter guy said, girl, this song's going to go for like a year. Wow. I was like, That's wow. so... Well, I'll take it. It's uh, it's you know, it's a recognizable tune that everybody loved, right? I mean, it was just a tune that that carries. But you, you really, you know, you did it justice. And I, I love it too. So, congrats Thank on the so success, much, Kevin. I appreciate that coming from you. I'm proud of you. It's awesome, man. I, I love you, dog. I love you too. I'm grateful that <laughs> you, you know, are so cool. I just love you so much. When you, you asked me to do this, I was like, where and when? Thank you. Thank and what you. time? I'm very grateful, Jade Starling. You're amazing. You're beautiful, and I uh, I'm proud of you. And and please do give way my best. And um, I will. You know, um, if people want to know more about the the upcoming shows and what happens with Crazy, they can go to prettypoisonmusic.com. Is that right? And they can find. Yeah, uh, check out the website okay. www.prettypoisonmusic.com cool. for all things uh, in Pretty Poison Land, all our dates and stuff. 
uh, follow me on my social media, IG, Facebook, Twitter, at Jade Starling. Uh, I just started doing some TikToks. I'm not really big on it just yet, but I'm easing in. But I am on TikTok, too, if you're interested. Right Check on. Me out, do my little dances. Um, <laughs> Love that. That's God. That's so good. Yeah, I try. Well, uh, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's a lot of stuff to juggle doing all this social media stuff. But I love it. And if your fans reach out to me, I promise I will get back to you. It's not a robot. It's not somebody I tell to get back to you. It's really me. I promise. That's so cool. You're such a badass, man. You're amazing, Jade. Thank you so much, hon. I appreciate this. Guys, if, uh, if you came in here late, uh, go to the prettypoisonmusic.com link that you see below. And, uh, and I would love it if you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to put the link right up here. Go to youtube.com slash at access Kevin. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Share it with your friends. And if you want and you want to become a member, you can actually join that YouTube channel. Become a super fan. And uh, you'll get access to some of the exclusive stuff that I have that's not privy to everybody that subscribes. I just posted a video with, with uh, Cy Kernan from The Fix, also Mid Year from Ultravox, and I'm dialing up the last of the interview with uh, Kelly Kigi from Night Ranger. So, Jade Starling, thank you so much, hon. It's great. I'm grateful to uh, to have you here. And, uh, I love you, Kevin. I love you, too. I think my phone's going to die, but I love you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks to all the fans for tuning in. and. Kevin, hit me up on the phone, dude. We're going to plan some uh, some jamming. For that sure. sounds great. Awesome, Jade. Thank you so much, hon. Have a beautiful Stay one, everybody. And, uh, love you guys. All right. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.